Hello guys, I'm going to do a new video and today we're going to be doing a new world guide for the build that I've been using and it is supposed to be a support healer build that is going to help you achieve three different things. So if you're playing new world right now and you're excited and you want to be a healer support main at the end game, you want to level your life staff, this is going to help you. This build is going to achieve, like I mentioned, three different things. First of all, solo. I don't want anyone to spend too much time killing mobs. I want a build that's going to be efficient because I mainly run solo. So if you're doing a lot of solo content yourself, like quests, this build, especially with hatchet build plus amber gem, equals AoE DPS speed clears with against all odds. This build, even though it means you're a healer support main, it's still very good in terms of AoE clears and solo gameplay because of the hatchet. So even if it is a focus heavy healing support build, your AoE clears, your solo content is going to be somewhat enjoyable when running the hatchet build, the lifestyle build in this video. Second of all, you are a healer main that you want to heal in the end game. You need to level your life staff mastery and therefore you want to be able to heal dungeons, expeditions, whatever you want to call them. So all of a sudden if there's someone in a group looking for a healer, you are more than capable of joining that group. You are a focus heavy healer and therefore you'll be able to really carry the healing in the group with this build while at the same time doing good solo content and the last thing that it also should help you with is pvp now it is a focus plus a constitution build which means you're going to have a lot of hp which means you're going to be tanky you might even use heavy armor if you decide to so you're able to survive a lot of the pvp fights because you're tanky you have a lot of healing your focus build you have constitution and all of a sudden your pvp contribution in any type of environment whether it'll be solo pvp whether it'll be group pvp you're pretty much unkillable if played correctly so let's go and start off with the life staff build that you're going to be using regardless whether you're in solo dungeon or pvp so this is extremely basic and this shows you the order that i've chosen but you are free to change it what i go with is absolve first and i try to get the first three healing abilities that you're going to be using for the rest of your game and that is going to be sacred ground that is going to be again you have to go and pick a bend light here and this is insanely important because after a dodge, your heals are 20% more effective for 5 seconds. Remember, bend light. This is going to be a key to your healing experience. I'm going to pick up beacon, and I'm going to be picking up lights and brace straight away. Now, there is a lot of people who like to go into sacred ground and max it out first, which I can see why it would work. But if people don't stand in a sacred ground, this all of a sudden becomes pretty irrelevant. So, I'm assuming get all of your heals first and then max them out depending on which order you prefer. Like I mentioned, I like to get Beacon, I like to get Lights and Brace, and I like to get Sacred Ground. These are abilities that are going to last me for a long time. Afterwards, I max out my uh, Sacred Ground with Holy Ground and with a Blessed. Now, you have to remember, regenerate Stamina and Mana 100% faster while in Sacred Ground. You have to remember that Bend Light, after a dodge, you heal 20% more effective for 5 seconds. What is dodge? Dodge is extremely easy to achieve because it's basically basically your roll ability. If you have light armor, it's going to be roll. If you don't have light armor, you're going to do kind of like a shimmy type of deal. After using this, your healing is going to be increased by 20% for 5 seconds. And it's based on your recovery of stamina. So if you do, if you do stand in sacred ground and if you do have holy ground trait activated, regenerate stamina and mana 100% faster, which means your stamina regeneration is going to be increased. And you're going to be able to dodge more, which in turn you're going to heal for more. So healing in New World, a lot of it is based on your dodge because of this single trait, a bend light. Now, after maxing out Sacred Ground, I like to go into Blissful Touch. Light attacks now heal targets for 20% of weapon damage when passing through an ally. This is extremely undervalued. And basically, this is going to promote using your life staff light attacks in order to heal people. So once you do your three healing abilities and they're on cooldown, all you can do is use your light attacks to attack the mobs and get your weapon mastery up, which also in turn is going to heal people. Very undervalued and I feel this is pretty much lock-in pick in a lot of situations. Now, after that, I go with Protector's Touch. It's quite easy to, like, you can see the benefit of it. And I max out Beacon. Now, you can see why Beacon is very popular. The first two trades are pretty much really, really useful. Beacon uh, area of effect is now 50% larger. It is really, really nice and Beacon lasts for 5 seconds longer. 
all of a sudden this is great. I would not take the last trade for a long, long time. Honestly, I don't think it's that needed. But the fact that you cannot use beacon on yourself is really kind of sad. But if you use it on the enemy, it's going to be pretty nice overall healing after that it's a little bit more open to your own interpretation honestly i think this couple of traits are pretty good but you can go for something like protector strength if you have a buff heal for 10 percent more very easy to maintain if you want i feel it's quite important to get this revitalize when you hit with light attacks reduce all of your cooldowns by five percent so all of a sudden again promotion towards using your light attacks and then you can maybe go with something like again this really depends but it's just a Passive buff while holding lifestyle increases the amount of healing to all friends in your group by 5%. Then you might have heavy attacks give you an increased healing by 10% for 10 seconds. This kind of changes your gameplay where you want to use three heavy attacks. You can already see how there is a lot of heavy promotion to spend most of your time with lifestyle in lifestyle stance using your abilities that are going to buff your heals in the next couple of seconds. For example, you might want to start off with three heavy attacks because it's going to buff your healing and then use your heals. You might want to start off with heavy attacks and maybe a dodge to buff your next sacred ground, including maybe beacon and lights of rays followed afterwards. And then all of a sudden you're going to have this rotation of getting buffs, I'm using my heals like Sacred Ground, Lights Embrace, or Beacon. Then I'm waiting for those cooldowns to come back up by using light attacks because that's going to reduce the cooldown. You're reducing the cooldown, you're dodging, you're using your heavy attacks, you're using your heals, and you can see how this infinite loop is going to promote a maximum HPS or healing potential build in this case. Now let's go to the solo section and this is assuming you want to have some good clear speeds of farming speeds and the best combo in this case is going to be hatchet plus lifestyle. Now make sure you have a good hatchet with a gem in it especially putting in an amber gem that's going to scale on your focus is very very important because you'll see the amount of extra DPS you're going to get the more focus you get. So hatchet with a socket a lot of times if you don't have a good option faction hatchet is a decent something to get if you don't have anything else but overall faction gear is somewhat iffy and you can probably replace it quite easily if you get something decent in the world out there or new world out there so this is a build that i feel is really really popular it's probably going to be something that a lot of live staff healer support builds are going to use the reason they're using hatchet is because it just it performs really well even when you don't put in any attributes towards the associated weapon. So most of my attributes are going to be in focus. I'm going to talk about that. But here is my build. And honestly, you can go... A lot of it is open interpretation. A lot of it is kind of test it out yourself and see what works. But there is a couple of things that are absolutely mandatory. Berserk is mandatory to get. This is going to be your bread and butter yet again if you want to deal damage. So you get Berserk, you get on the hunt, and there is a couple of ways to really cheese this if you're traveling from place to place where you can activate Berserk for the increased movement speed. And after that, I like to go, but it doesn't have to be you. I like to go for Raging Torrents because I'm going to use Raging Torrents for my AoE cleaves when I'm battling five or six enemies. And the most important part after, after this is going to be the next two abilities, and that's going to be Berserking Refresh. While Berserking is active, you gain a portion of your health back. This is something that can be... You can take against all odds first and then take Berserking second because if you're a healer with life staff, you don't really need the healing or extra healing. But I feel this kind of helps you to not die with the initial big pull. So once you have Berserking Refresh and then you go to against all odds, increases base damage by 10% for every enemy between 5 meters of a player, you're going into AoE farming. So you can see here, I'm gathering enemies, multiple enemies. In this case, with against all odds, it's better to fight five or six enemies because it's going to take the same amount of time to kill those five or six enemies that it takes you to kill one enemy because of against all odds. So start with your life staff, just tag the mobs. It's very important to get at least a little bit of damage from your life staff because that way you're going to increase the weapon mastery. So this is the whole thing. Your main concern is to be a healer endgame and you need to level your life staff, start with life staff, get an initial hit, then gather all the mobs together. You can put sacred ground or put beacon on the enemies because that's going to provide additional healing. Stand in sacred ground and activate your berserk. Now, a little tip or trick here that a lot of people might not know. When you press berserk, you have this one second where you're just like roaring and you can't really do anything. If you press right click right afterwards, which is going to initiate a blocking animation, you can pretty much cut down the animation by half. 
So all of a sudden, Berserking, right click, and you can pretty much use your next ability, which is going to be Raging a Torrent. Kind of mow down all the enemies in front of you. And if you still need to finish them off, you can use your third ability, Feral Rush. And there is certain traits that are going to deal more damage on enemies that are below like 30% HP. This should be enough for you to kill five or six enemies that are even miles above your item level or your level in general. And this is how you're going to farm for most of the solo content. So now let's go to the dungeon expedition slash PVP combo. And that is going to be Ice Gauntlet with your Life Staff. Again, Life Staff is your main component in this. And in here, the main thing you want to get is Entombed. This is going to provide you with a bunch of mana every 30 seconds, which means you technically have infinite mana pool if you don't spend all of your mana in those 30 seconds until the cooldown becomes available. So all of a sudden, any mana regeneration tools or skills outside of this are somewhat irrelevant because you have Entombed, which is insane. So my honest opinion, go and get Entombed as soon as possible if you're doing a dungeon, if you're doing PvP. This is going to be insane. And again, I go with Quick Frost. It's not that big of a deal. I have tried out Ice Pylon. I didn't really like it. I don't think it was that amazing, but maybe there's going to be some builds that are going to be better. So I usually go with Quick Frost and then I go get I shower. Now, the reason I'm getting other spells outside of Entombed, think of Ice Gauntlet as a complete support weapon. You're not really running intellect build. You don't have any points in intellect. So all of a sudden, it's not going to deal a lot of damage. You can put an Amber Gem in Ice Gauntlet to kind of scale with focus, but I don't think that's good as a hatchet build. So every other ability you're going to pick here is going to do with CC and utility for your group. So you pick Ice Shower because you might pull aggro a lot of the times in dungeons and there's going to be mobs around you. You can use Ice Shower to escape from them. And after that, I go Entombed. Now, after I get Entombed, I really do like to go with, again, try and get Ice Storm. So to get Ice Storm, you need to go to Critical Rejuvenation, record 50 mana after triggering a critical hit on the target. I don't think you're going to be spending a lot of time in Ice Gauntlet or you're going to be using a lot of light attacks because I remember at the start of the video, the light and heavy attacks of your life staff are heavily or they contribute to a heavy boost in healing. So you're not going to be spending or you really want to spend more time in life staff or using life staff. But I think Ice Storm and getting Ice Storm is very important and basically buffing maximum amount of traits that you can provide because all of a sudden you're going to get incoming damage is increased by 10% for 3 seconds to so enemies and ice storm is below 50 health ice storm mana cost is decreased by 80% at full mana and decreases or increases damage by 10% for each enemy in ice storm now this is exactly like against all odds so you could technically have a build where you use your entomb you get your full mana you use your ice storm because at full mana your ice storm is 80% or decreased by 80% so entombed Ice Storm, and then all of a sudden, all the adds in the Ice Storm are taking a you know significant amount of damage. You're doing pretty well. Maybe a mob pulls it. You use Ice Shower to get away, and then you switch to your Life Staff to do healing and to provide a decent amount of damage. And I feel this combo is pretty much going to be the meta for majority of healers. Or it has worked really, really well for me in dungeons and PvP combat. So now, in terms of attributes on a character. A lot of people will tell you, go and get 150 focus as soon as possible because all of a sudden you're going to get a specific bonus with 20% healing output, plus 20% healing output. And again, this is going to be a big bonus that you want to achieve. But I do think if you're doing any sort of PvP, adding some points towards constitution is very important. Maybe getting that 50 constitution is quite important because all health consumables, 20% stronger, I think is relatively good, especially if you, do, not relatively, it's pretty insane for PvP content because potions are going to be a big part of your overall experience. So solo and dungeon content, 150 focus is pretty important. If not, I think you can go something like 50 focus, 50 constitution, then 150 focus afterwards if you're trying to do it. Now, it depends on your gear. Again, a lot of the gear that you're going to try and get is relatively hard to get, but generally speaking, you're looking for something with constitution and focus on it because those are the only things that you're really putting your points into. You're not putting points into intelligence or anything like that. And again, this is going to be something that I've been using. In terms of the gear, you can go, again, there's a lot of people who are not aware of the light, medium, heavy armor that you can use. If you're using heavy armor, you're foregoing of a lot of extra bonus healing and DPS. And I don't think that's that bad of a deal. 
if you're doing pvp i think you should go heavy even if you're doing solo content i think you can afford to go heavy armor and just be completely like a tank almost or a paladin if you play world of warcraft a plate wear that does a bunch of healing and cannot die now, if you don't want to go heavy, I think you can easily, in a lot of the dungeon content, go medium to light because you're going to do extra damage and healing, which, again, is going to be a pretty good bonus. So, it's up to you. If you're doing PvP, I definitely would go with heavy or how to heal with this build. I talked about this wild covering ice content and uh, life staff. few things that you need to cover. In dungeon environment, you'll notice that you can kind of scroll through the players in your party you can use your middle mouse button to scroll from player one to player two three whatever and you can see your abilities like sacred ground being placed on them if you want to remove that lock ability you can press the middle mouse button place your sacred ground anyway you just have to kind of aim it so in this case we have our sacred ground and we can use it anyway if i was in a five man party it's going to kind of scroll through the members and i can use my uh, middle mouse button to select which target if I want to unlock it, I click my middle mouse button and I can place it anywhere. And now if I want to place it on myself, I can press Ctrl and then Q. And that's going to put a heal on myself. And this is kind of important in solo content. But the general consensus of your gameplay is going to be around making sure you get a lot of buffs. Again, this is the dodge. You can see, after, you can see the little buff over my yellow bar. Yellow bar is the stamina. So this is a stamina recovery. Every time I dodge, my yellow bar is going to go down. And I, can't, I can only dodge a certain amount. But dodging is going to give me increased healing, 20% for 5 seconds. So you can also use your Sacred Ground, because if you have the certain trait, it's going to increase your stamina recovery. So a lot of the time, the whole healer build is around dodging and buffing all of your healing abilities. And if you have that trait where your 3 heavy attacks are going to add a buff, healing buff, you might want to start off with heavy attacks. And then you want to make sure you dodge, use your things like Sacred Ground, use things like Beacon. Again, Beacon cannot be used on yourself, very unfortunate, or use things like Light Embrace. Now, Light Embrace, again, you can use your scroll to scroll through it in, your, in a group party. And you can see where I'm going with this. There's an infinite loop of buffing your abilities, using your heavy attacks if you have that trait, or using your light attacks when you have all your heals on cooldown and no one's taking any damage, you're using your light attacks to get cooldown reduction on your healing abilities and also the light attacks that pass through allies it also heals them so you can see how you have an infinite loop of buffing abilities buffing heals using dodge using stamina recovery using your heals and when your heals are on cooldown and when you have no mana you swap to ice gauntlet and you basically use them too if you go and tomb you can use your left button to kind of shatter people around you which can be really great but a lot of times I don't like to do that because I want to stay at 100% mana so my next ice storm is going to be decreased in mana by like 80% so you can see that the mana cost was basically nothing so I can use ice storm to CC mobs if someone pulls or I'm pulling aggro and there's mobs around me I can use again there's a lot of ways to CC people and then I swap back to healing and then all of a sudden I'm like okay I'm gonna use uh, dodge i'm gonna use my sacred ground i'm gonna use my beacon and things like that so this is how you repeat your life staff cycle into your ice gauntlet cycle and you kind of rinse and repeat this in order to have infinite mana slash healing buffs that are always consistently persisting especially if you get to spend any time in sacred ground where you can see your stamina recovery is just insane so you can pretty much get this all the time. The problem with this is that Sacred Ground is kind of small and you might take some additional hits. And therefore that's why medium or heavy armor might be recommended. And this is the playstyle for the heavy focus support healer. Now before I finish the video I wanted to talk about gems and some of the food. Food is low key overpowered and if you can actually level food yourself... There is a lot of attribute food that you can use. Now, it really depends on how much gold or how much time you're willing to invest. But if you go to an auction house or the trading post, you'll notice that there is a lot of different foods out there like the meat skewers, like things like venison, pot roast, which can give you focus. These are very low level kind of 
available consumables at this point but they're relatively cheap depending on your server and you can pick them up and it's going to give you focus and focus is going to increase your healing and to some extent your damage and solo content when you put an amber gem and this is where we go to the gems in the solo content portion of the video we talked about hatchet and you have to put in the amber gem amber gem is going to be pretty much mandatory in this and all of a sudden any focus points that you get they're also going to scale with your hatchet to some extent so but now if you have a live staff and you have a gem what do you put in there a lot of people will go with a diamond because diamond is going to provide a specific amount of or additional damage and outgoing healing while at full health and this is something that a lot of people might use in the end game and early game because the gems are relatively easy especially tier 2 and things like that so that's something to consider this is something that i've been running let me know guys how you feel about this video let me know if i missed out on some tips and tricks there is a lot of ways to Again, the game is a little bit buggy and there's some issues with some healing abilities that are just outright not working at this point. So I do think the build is going to change when there's going to be certain bugs fixed. Let me know if I missed out on something. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next guide.